Hi all, I'm Deepa here. I requested many people to ask about the question related to OET writing. Uh, I have got many questions from many people and I chose some of them to discuss today because uh, there are many questions as I told. So I cannot cover everything in one video. So I made it two. I'll uh, look for the grammar session in a separate video. Grammar session in the sentence, I'm not going in deep for every into English grammars. I will just choose some words which is suitable for OET writing and how to use it. These all things will be discussed in the next video. So firstly, this video, I'm going to uh, explain one question from my student is that uh, how, what are the new changes in OET writing? So I'm going to tell you that in detail now. There are six marking criteria now, which was updated recently, few months ago. First one is purpose. Uh, the, the updated marking criteria tells that you must write the purpose quickly and precisely in the introduction. You, you no need to write the diagnosis in the introduction paragraph. You can write it later on. <clears throat> Sorry. So you have to write purpose clearly and quickly. For example, I will give uh, whatever way you are following. I'm writing to refer or I write to refer. The purpose of my letter is or uh, Mr. X is being referred, whatever doesn't matter. As I told in one example, Mr. X is being referred to your service. For what? That is a purpose. For uh, continued care and management or whatever. That should come there. It's not mandatory to have a diagnosis in the introduction paragraph. That means Mr. X is being referred to your service for continued care and management following so and so, so and so. It's not mandatory. You can write in the coming paragraph. The second marking criteria is about the content. Your content must be accurate in a professional way. You have to write accurately. Next one is about the clarity of the letter. Clarity. What do you mean by clarity of your letter? You know that your OET letter will have many information like patient admitted last year, this year, in between, whatever. From that, you have to choose what you need. You have to avoid what you doesn't need. It's not uh, mandatory to avoid everything which is not relevant. You can choose from that which is uh, slightly relevant to our topic. Some cases, the for example, if the if you are transferring your patient to a physiotherapist, and you know that in the social history patient is uh, staying in the two floored house it doesn't matter for physiotherapist but you can include as a part of mobility or after surgery the patient may have difficulty to climb the stairs in that sense if you think that may be least important so that's what in the clear way you have to write summarize and write next is uh, one important point I should I would like to mention here is about the word count. Before in the question they'll write like 180 to 200 words. Now it's not like that. They are not going to count your words. But if you follow the relevant information, of course your letter will be in between 180 to 200. But they are no more counting the words. Then about the genre and style. Always you know there is a professional way of writing. OET letter if you write, you should have a professional way of writing. And always consider the reader. If I'm a dietitian, I'm getting a letter from you, I should understand what you wrote in the letter. So that is the general and style. You must write professionally, same time, according to the reader's, uh, reader's view, you have to write. Next is about the organization and layout. As all, we all know already about this organization and layout, how it will come. It is not mandatory to have past medical history in the front, then present medical history or present first paragraph, past second paragraph. There is nothing like that. You can write which is appropriate for you. 
if you write something in the uh, introduction paragraph and you know what will come in the first paragraph and what will come in the second paragraph and whom you are writing depends upon your paragraph style may change so that's what is organization then um, you have to use the language of course language must be clear understandable proper use of vocabularies must be there proper way of writing the using the language now uh, some of us are very good with vocabularies and i know some very big big words from the vocabulary and i'm good in vocabulary please don't do this in the oet exam that experiment whatever vocabulary you have uh, in the oet letter the same time consider the reader your reader is a manager in a reception or your reader is a, a staff nurse your reader can be a doctor can be an occupational therapist or whoever so consider the reader when you write your vocabulary use the professional way and write the vocabulary as needed these are the updated writing criteria or marking criteria i mean these are the updates then i heard that some people are telling we should avoid uh, some kind of connectives like us this is the new update in writing we should avoid us it's right that uh, ma'am rebecca told in a live session that we have to avoid us in oed writing she mentioned try to avoid not to avoid try to avoid then uh, i clarified myself with them through chat and they answered me that if you know the proper use of as you can use it they told to avoid it because they found frequent mistake by the usage of us so they told try to avoid the usage of us that means it is not an update from oet these all are the updates from oet writing then next question was uh, can you explain what all things needed to write for different persons such as social worker occupational therapist etc see you have got a letter and it's clearly written that you need to write to a dietitian just imagine you are a dietitian and you got a letter from uh, a nurse or from an, another hospital while you're going through that what all things you will check in that you know your patient had a very big surgery whatever surgery may be he had a surgery okay now patient need some adjustment in the food due to that firstly as a dietitian is there any nutritional problem patient is able to chew or patient has any dangers or has a gastric tube whatever you will look for that as a dietitian you want that then about some lab investigation or something cholesterol medication antihypertensive medication as a dietitian we will not go through some kind of medication like antibiotic how many days they are taking is he getting oral antibiotic iv antibiotic we don't care about that but we'll surely look for the lab result especially this electrolytes any cholesterol medication if they are taking looking for the cholesterol cholesterol level blood sugar level if patient is diabetic so now we know what all things a dietitian want we should know the role of the reader if you know the role of the reader you will not ask me this question at all because how to write to a dietitian how to write to a physiotherapist how to write to a nurse how to write to a receptionist these all things already included in their profession so what you as a nurse what you should do before writing in the 5 minutes time you have to replace yourself as that reader so you can write easily if is your therapist what they need from your letter when they read the letter what is your therapist will read in a surgery this patient had any mobility problem they will hardly look for the calcium result or they will look for any surgical intervention whatever or medication they will not go for that if there are any supplements which is related to the mobility 
they need to have a consideration but it is least important for them but if there is any walking need or willy walker surely they look at it so according to the person you can write the purpose of the letter and throughout the letter you have to consider the reader then your letter will be excellent one the third question is about but how to organize a letter what should come in the first paragraph this also as i told you have to consider the reader for example i have a question that uh one uh, student asked me one question today that i got a letter which is saying that i need to write a letter to a request for a pension so i am writing to a non medical person how can we write that i want to request to get a pension for my patient i'm writing to a pensioning office uh, officer how can we write so in this case what should come in the first paragraph that that's the question is first paragraph second paragraph third paragraph what should come so first you wrote the purpose as you are writing this uh, letter to request for a pension or arrange pension or whatever you wrote it and the first paragraph you have to support the purpose what is your purpose you want to uh, give pension to your patient the second paragraph why your patient need pension why your patient need pension maybe due to the social problem social history maybe due to the medical history maybe some other reason so you have to write there why the patient need pension in the second paragraph third paragraph you can say like he had a surgery in our hospital so he has some mobility problems uh, or financial problems whatever you can tell least important first you first you have to give priority why he need a pension it could be a financial problem it could be related to his social issues like uh, uh, he was doing household work now he is unable to do that because of his knee replacement surgery so you don't have any income right now so he is requesting for that it could come in the first the second about the something related to hospitalization not he has had a, a arthritis or hypertension or whatever why he didn't apply till now he had some problems uh, or he was quite fine till now now he has got some problems so that we are requesting so in this letter we don't want to include some irrelevant information like medication history or uh, a disease history or and so on and so forth. and in conclusion you can write uh, uh, what uh, what you need from them kindly make arrangement for that and frequent mistake i found uh, in many letters that if you have any queries please do not hesitate to contact me or if you have any queries uh, kindly contact me this uh, i i heard recently that you have to add a subject to that that will be more perfect so please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any further queries about mr john that it is more accurate you have a specific subject in that i think uh, this all i covered all the general ideas about the oit i'll move to the grammar session in the next video thank you for watching bye